Welcome to BOCO Summit, the Rural Broadband Technology Solution Summit 2018. We wish to thank our sponsors for helping to create a path for fast, affordable connections. How Botetourt County can assist providers, assets, and expectations with Gary LaRue, Botetourt County Administrator and man who connects the dots. Everybody, if they don't know him, should know him. And if they don't know him, they will know him. Um, but is our county administrator, um, Gary LaRue. Uh, he, he was in Carroll County, administrator in Carroll County. There is a meeting that I went to at VACO, and I heard this gentleman speak. And I said, man, just the energy this guy has, the people that he knows, how he approaches everything is just fantastic. I can't say enough for Gary LaRue and what he has done to Botetourt County, where he's put us on the map, the businesses that he has formulated, his connectivity with the amount of people that he has from a political standpoint, as well as outside the United States. He has done a fantastic job. He is a great husband, a great father, a, one, a fantastic son, and uh, as, as he's going through a difficult time right now, <clears throat> I'd ask for prayers for his, uh, his mother. But uh, at any event, I can't, uh, can't speak enough about Gary LaRue. And as a true friend, Gary, if you'll come up and speak. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. It's great to be here. It's exciting to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity, and uh, hopefully we can end up getting the uh, slides to load. Daryl, we may have to actually have your help here. I don't know. Okay, there it goes. Okay, here it goes. Okay, all's good. All's good. Hey, we really appreciate, and it's a great opportunity to be here with you. Also, I'd like to, uh, we've got Dr. Scott Horn, who's on the Board of Supervisors. We've also got Steve Clinton in the back. It's on the Board of Supervisors. Steve, raise your hand back there. Appreciate, appreciate Steve. Uh, Jack Leffel, our Board Chair, he is uh, uh, taking his wife to a medical uh, visit today and could not attend. Um, Ray Sloan, I think he had some other appointments and um, had a call last night. Many of you in the room know what kind of calls he gets. Um, and so he is, uh, is, is doing that. And uh, Billy Martin is actually in the Outer Banks. And so uh, w let's all uh, uh, thank Billy for doing that. Anyway, uh, that was facetious, obviously. He's, he's fishing, he's not, he's not doing anything. Uh, and if you, uh, if you see Billy, please be sure to point out that he went to the Outer Banks fishing. So. Uh, one of the things Mac, uh, he, he talked about was that yesterday was the Board of Supervisors meeting. And you know, I've had lots of opportunities to be around the world, as, as Mac said. Uh, all kinds of th crazy things happened. I've, I've been held at gunpoint in Nicaragua. I've been, um, uh, <laughs> just crazy things with the Sandinistas and the Contras. I, I wasn't sure who was gonna win there. But anyway, all kinds of crazy things that's happened around the world. But the most dangerous place for me is at a Board of Supervisors meeting. <laughs> and so actually there was a board meeting yesterday as Mac explained and so I apologize that we were not as uh, able to be involved but uh, we were certainly here in thoughts and prayers and, and uh, appreciate that. So uh, also one of the things that has happened uh, throughout my career, I've, I've had lots of opportunities. I was in a Kellogg Fellowship in, in leadership many years ago and um, traveled around the world. Kellogg paid, for, paid the bill while I was on faculty at Virginia Tech. And uh, uh, so I've, I've had lots of opportunities. I've had uh, uh, opportunities to be with former President John Kufour in Ghana, uh, President uh, of Iceland, uh, President Lulu da Silva from uh, Brazil. Uh, that didn't work out too well for him. He's in prison today. but. Anyway, um, also um, many years ago started off as uh, standing in the Rose Garden of the White House with uh, President Ronald Reagan. And I, I just graduated from high school and went to and, and had that opportunity. And it was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. But none of those compare to being here with you today. 
And the reason why is because this is the, the bottom line, this is the bottom rung of community development. And it is something that is so vital for this community and for the region, and it's for our future of our kids and the future of this community to grow forward. So this is the most important place to be. And thank you for being here and being part of that. One of the other things that Mac mentioned was working with champions. We've, we've, we have had a golden opportunity to work with a champion. Um, and uh, I would like for Arlene to come back because she is the world's best champion. And, and I didn't know that Mac was gonna be doing the same thing. So, you know, I, 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 I would. I, <laughs> well, I knew that you love flowers, but you know, I, would, I would like to point out that my bouquet is a little larger than Mac's. <laughs> So anyway, I, you know, sorry, Mac, you know, hey, sorry about that. Um, one of the things that uh, Arlene ended up suggesting, and if Arlene suggests it's, it's the, you better, better damn do it, okay, <laughs> is she said you need to identify your superpower. Well, I started thinking about that. I said, hmm, what is my superpower? Obviously, I can't leap tall buildings. Um, I can't uh, stop a speeding bullet. I haven't tried that. I don't really think I want to try. And I can't, uh, I'm not more powerful than a locomotive, but in reality, I'm sort of a, if, if this changes, I hope it does, I'm sort of a dot connector. It is really what I end up doing, is that connecting the dots between opportunities and engagement between the communities in which we serve, trying to pick up little bits and pieces and connecting those dots ends up helping to move the community forward. So if there is a superpower, and I, I don't uh, claim that, but if there is, that would probably be what it might end up being. We, we ended up having an opportunity to connect some dots in Botetourt County over the last almost three years been here since January the 15th of 2016, and we've had an opportunity to connect some dots. There's growth that's taken place, and we all know that here, and that's actually one of the things that's promulgated the need for additional broadband. The two-year total uh, is over a thousand new direct jobs that have been added. We're expecting another 300 that would be on the books today by 2024 a total of $182.5 million in investment, and another $28 million by 2024. That, that includes the Eldor operation and uh, Ballast Point um, uh, and the community college system that, that has been here. You can end up seeing some of the growth that's taking place. As a matter of fact, for ones of you that are visiting, uh, the Eldor operation, the opening for that is next week on October the 4th and we're really super excited about that, of having a world-class company that's gonna be here in Botata, and it's gonna end up bringing all kinds of opportunities. I had an opportunity to be in Italy back in February and meet with the uh, upper management of, of Eldor, which we're all on a first-name basis all the, all, with everyone uh, in Eldor, and they were showing me all of these futuristic kinds of things and technologies that they have. We know that we're getting a automotive ignition systems plant. What you might not know is that you're getting innovation outside of that. You're getting all kinds of things that is in the back end of that. You're getting all kinds of entrepreneurial uh, gifts are coming to this community. They showed me some of these things that they're, they're working on, some of the patents that they've gotten and things of that sort. And Andrea Durante, which David knows very well, helped with the uh, negotiations for Eldor back in uh, 16. Uh, 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 Andre said, how many of these new in, uh, uh, inventions or innovations do you think that we're working on? I said, I don't know, maybe five, 10, something. He said, no, we have more than 75 that Eldor is actually involved in and invested in worldwide. All of these are dealing with technology. So we're really looking for a future of, of lots of different things. You can end up seeing some of the inside of Eldor there. 
and, uh, and it is just an incredible opportunity. Same thing for Ballast Point. Ballast Point, which we had dinner there last night, it was just an incredible opportunity. And Ballast Point is an example of what $59 million will actually buy you. It, it's, it's just incredible opportunity for this community and a magnet for millennials. A magnet for millennials actually drives the need for broadband. The, 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 the millennials drive the need for the housing. So there's all kinds of opportunities that are associated with that. Now, let's get down to what I was really supposed to talk about is ex assets and expectations. And if you end up looking at this as assets on one side, expectations on the other. I was thinking about this and, and how, how does it all fit together associated with the county? Well, the county is a convener. We, we don't have the resources to go out and build our own fiber network. I wish we did. I wish that were the case. We don't have that. So what we end up doing is convening the people who have that, who have the opportunities, and might be able to actually direct or redirect some of those resources into this community. One of the things as part of the Kellogg Fellowship many years ago, they, they taught us over the three-year period is to start a conversation. Start a conversation about something that's in your community with the leaders in the community, work out in concentric circles, and then you end up having people buy into that. Lots of people buying into that. So in reality, this is a conversation starter about broadband within this community. We appreciate you being here. Uh, is part of the expectation is that you actually came. Thank you for that. The other expectation is discuss our broadband issues. Last night I was sitting at the table. Um, we got there late because of the uh, board meeting and things of that sort, and I didn't get to get around to meet all of you and everything, but, but we were sitting at the table and we were having deep discussions about broadband issues and how we could end up utilizing resources that we've never even thought about. We were there with Nicole from the uh, Brookings Institute last night with Dr. Scott Horn and, and Steve talking about how we could end up utilizing this as a pilot location for something in the future. Those discussions are very, very valuable. One of the other things is, is being entrepreneurial. And I know, uh, you know, it's easy to say, oh, let's go out and be entrepreneurial. It's, it's more difficult than that. I was on adjunct faculty with the, the Kauffman Foundation for many years out of Kansas City and went around teaching entrepreneurial education, about 25 universities throughout the nation, land-grant universities. And it's, it's more difficult than that. To get that embedded into a community culture, one of the things that you have to do is you have to be entrepreneurial. Now, what does that mean? That means that the local government and agencies in the community have to think outside the box as well. You, you're not going to end up having an entrepreneurial community if the local government is stagnant. So what we have been doing over the time that I've been here is trying to mix that up a little bit, do things a little differently. We've, we've had so many home runs. It's not because of me. It's because of the, the folks before me that ended up leading the way, the, having Greenfield here, having all kinds of opportunities. But we have looked at that a little bit differently and tried to be entrepreneurial in our, in our community in the way that we've discussed that. As far as the expectations, we would ask that we stretch you. We stretch you, we challenge you, we challenge us to move forward with the things that we can end up doing. And that we ask that you add value and get out of the silos that, that people are in. We would ask that we connect the dots the dots of everyone that's in this room. If we ended up taking all of that, all of that energy and excitement from this room and connected all the dots and, and made uh, those, those uh, investments here, it would be incredible what we could do. Also, you end up having a community as far as the assets is that you have a community that's desiring a solution. You know, a lot of times the fight is to actually prove to someone that they actually need something. Well with the Broadband Commission and with the help of everyone that's there, what we're doing is that we're asking for solutions. We already know that there's a problem and we're willing to talk about the problem. Many communities don't ever talk about the problem. So we would ask that, uh, uh, that you end up helping us to expand the broadband in the community and that we would celebrate. 
you know, um, by default, many of you don't know this, but we've been without a fire chief for uh, some time. And so that by Code of Virginia actually falls back on me in some way as a, a emergency services director from the code. And then it's passed on to the fire chief. Well, one of the things that, that the uh, fire departments always try to do, and it was, it was reminded, uh, I was reminded the other night, is that no matter if they, um, if they succeed or if they fail or if they progress or not, they always celebrate with a big ass cake. And yeah, the county administrator said big ass cake. Well, guess what? That's what we need to be doing is celebrating about the, the kinds of things that's going on in this community. And let's celebrate together and let's push this as the opportunities go. Daryl, this thing's still a little slow. Okay, broadband, okay. The expansion, broadband expansion allows new terms in the community. Broadband was a new word. You think that that's, hey, that's fairly new. Guess what, that was, uh, that was coined back in the 80s. Artificial intelligence, we were talking about that last night. Guess, that was coined back in 1956. And we're talking about that today as being a mainstay of the future of communities with young folks. Machine learning, how do we incorporate that into the educational system? That's not an old term, it's, it's not a new, new term to us, maybe, but it's not a new term. That was actually coined back in 1959. Bioinformatics, something that we may or may not know about yet. It was in 1970. And Walter's big data uh, was, was back in 1980. Uh, he's the big data expert. And that big data has doubled every 40 months since then. So what if we ended up planting a flag in Botetot and saying that we were going to be the world's leading whatever, the world's leading uh, county for machine learning, the world's leading county for artificial intelligence, the world's leading community for big data. Can you imagine what the opportunities might end up being? And the world, the world would end up coming to us because we're actually doing that. So I would challenge people to, to think about that. I don't think that the solution is a silver bullet. Not at all. It's more like silver buckshot that's associated. And that we have opportunity to actually make this thing happen. Um, you know, one of the things I'd mentioned about was uh, conversations. I'll give you an example of a conversation that ended up taking place in this room, uh, and that was our housing summit. We had a housing summit. We, we knew that we needed to have housing in the community. We ended up getting everyone that was breathing that could end up uh, spell house and, uh, and who had any kind of idea, connection to housing. We had them in this room, we talked about our opportunities, and that, as a result, today there's about a total of somewhere in the neighborhood of 900 units have actually been approved and are under construction or under development in some way. That did not naturally happen. It happened because we ended up getting people just like you talking about that topic. So I would challenge that this is basically an extension of that and that we're talking about that in the future. Um, one of the things that I would uh, end up saying, finish up here, is that uh, this is not rocket science. This is, this is not brain surgery. It's much more difficult than that. This is community and economic development. And we need you. We seek you. We're interested in you. And we want you to actually uh, help us to solve this, this issue. It reminds me a little bit of a story about a preacher. Preacher who was going to expand the church. And he needed cash to expand the church. And he gets up in the pulpit and he says, hey, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. He said, the good news is, is that we've got all of the money necessary to expand the church. The bad news is, it's still in your pocket. What I would say is that in reality, we have the good news is that expansion of broadband in Botetourt County, his, we have the resources here. Now what we need to do is play upon those resources and get them 
deployed with each one of your help to actually make this thing happen. So with that, God bless you. Thank you for a wonderful uh, event, and we look forward to the future. So. We would like to give a special thanks to these organizations. Engage with us on our journey at Boko Summit at BadatotVA.gov. And a special thanks goes to our community volunteers. We also would like to thank our sponsors. This has been presented by Botetourt County of Virginia. The BOCO Summit was produced at the direction of the Botetourt County Broadband Advisory Commission.